which hormone is not responsible for fetal growth in intrauterine period your options are thyroxine insulin growth hormone or it is glucocorticoid now think thyroxine is responsible for skeletal maturation so it is essential insulin plays important role in tissue accretion and differentiation so that is also important Glucocorticoid is responsible for maturation of organs like liver, lung and GIT in late gestation so that is also very essential. But growth hormone however present in a very large amount is not responsible for fetal growth in intrauterine period. So correct answer is growth hormone. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to have marathon of MCQ on the very important topic of pediatric that is growth. So do not skip anything. Watch till end. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Dr. Triya Virani Malde, pediatrician and consultant neonatologist. I'll be your guide for pediatric subject. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe and give like to this video because lot is going to happen for pediatrics on this channel. The next question is hormone mainly responsible for skeletal maturation of fetus is testosterone, thyroxine, estrogen or it is growth hormone. So correct answer is option B thyroxine. We have just now discussed that thyroxine is responsible for skeletal maturation. Its deficiency will retard the skeletal growth but it does not have any effect on the linear growth of the fetus. The next question is the maximum age for growth of the lymphoid tissue is your options are 2 to 3 years, 4 to 8 years, 7 to 11 years or it is 11 to 14 years. Here we have to remember that between the age of 4 to 8 years when, when the child starts going to school at the time the growth of the lymphoid tissue is maximum and we have to remember this curve where the growth of the lymphoid tissue in the form of thymus and the other lymph nodes will be between the age of 4 to 8 years. Next question is what is this instrument used for? The options are measure weight, measure length, measure head circumference or it's for the measurement of the skin fold thickness. This is called photographic or pictorial memory. You have to see the photographs or picture or images as much as possible. So you'll be remembering the images and you will be remembering the image based question very nicely in your exam. So this is called infantometer which is used to measure the length of the child who is less than 2 years of the age. So correct answer is option B measure length. The next question is what is this equipment used for? For measuring midarm circumference, height, head circumference or it is for the skin fold thickness. This is called Shakir's tape which is used for the community screening it is color coded tape in which if it is a green it means it is normal more than 13.5 cm if the color is yellow it is moderate malnutrition between 12.5 to 13.5 and if it is red then it is severe malnutrition less than 12.5 cm so correct option was option a measuring midarm circumference what is this instrument used for? Your options are measure weight, measure height, measure head circumference or it is for the measurement of the skin fold thickness. Correct answer is option D for the measurement of the skin fold thickness. This is Harpendon caliper which is used to measure the skin fold thickness and these are the area which is to be measured suprascapular, subscapular, bicep and tricep and the values are plotted and compared with the chart as percentile. Which of the following is not true in assessing the skin fold thickness? Options are measured at the level of tricep, measured at to the nearest of 1 cm, Tenner's chart contains the normal value or it indirectly indicates the caloric reserve of the body. We have just now discussed that yes, it is measured at the tricep, suprascapular, subscapular and bicep level. Tenner's chart contains the normal value but now we are also having availability of WHO chart. It also indirectly indicate the caloric reserve but we have not discussed anywhere that it has to be measured nearest of 1 cm so option B was incorrect that measured to be nearest of 1 cm. The next question is birth weight doubles by the age of 3 months, 5 months, 9 months or 12 months. Correct answer is option B 5 months. We are going to discuss the answer in detail in the next slide. 
the next question is weight of the child quadruples by the age of 9 months 12 months 2 year or 3 year so correct answer is option c 2 years and for that we need to remember this chart at the birth if it is x 5 months 2x 1 year 3x 2 year 4x 3 year 5x at the age of 4 years the child will achieve the very important milestone of 100 cm of the height so 4 year will remember 100 cm of the height 5 year 6x 6 years nothing to be remember 7 year 7x 10 year 10x for us the question was it is doubles at which time so correct answer was 5 months and the next question was quadruple by which age so the correct answer was 2 years the next question is normal gain in a length in a full term baby in first 6 month is for the length we need to remember that the birth length is 50 one year it is 75 2 year it is 90 and by the age of 4 year it is 100 so we roughly know that in the one year the child will gain 25 cm of the length many a times a student will do a 25 divided by 2 because it is asked for the first 6 months and the the answer they'll reach at the 20 12.5 cm which is not given in this but the correct answer is not 12.5 cm the correct answer we are going to discuss that between 0 to 3 month the increment of the height is 3.5 cm per month between 3 to 6 months it is 2 cm per month so Between zero to three months, the child will gain ten centimeter of the height. Between three to six months, child will gain the height of six centimeters. So approximately, approximately ten point five plus six, sixteen point five centimeter will be gain of the height in the first six months. So the closest answer is fifteen centimeters. So option C was correct. The next question is height of a child doubles the birth height at the age of 1 year, 2 year, 3 year and 4 year. So birth height is 50, 75, 90 and 100. So 50 going to 100 which is at the age of 4 year. So correct answer is option D 4 year. This is what we just now discussed 50 At three months sixty, then nine months seventy, one year seventy-five, two year ninety, and four year four hundred. Four year hundred. So, hundred centimeter or the double the birth height by the age of four years. Increase in the height in the first year by. We have to answer in percentage: forty percent, fifty percent, sixty percent. We all know it is twenty-five centimeters. we have to just put a simple calculation that out of 50 it will out of 50 it will be 25 so out of 100 how much it will be and the answer is 50% question is a normal healthy child has a height of 100 cm and weight of 16 kg what is the most likely age we all know that 100 cm is achieved by the age of 4 years so this is correct but we need to also counter check with the weight so we are going to learn the formula or revise the formula that is between age of 0 to 1 year we are using formula x plus 9 by 2 between 1 to 6 year we are using 2x plus 8 and more than 6 years we are using formula of 3x where the x is in years so between 1 to 6 year it is 2x plus 8 so here 2x plus 8 is 16 So 16 divided by 8 is 2x. 8 is equal to 2x. So correct answer is x is equal to 4 years. So here also it is coming 4 years. So correct answer is option B, 4 years. The rate of increase in HC in first three months: 2 cm per month, 1 cm per month, 0.5 cm per month, or it is 0.25 cm per month. The correct answer is option A. We need to remember. we need to remember that between 0 to 3 months 2 cm per month 4 to 6 month 1 cm then 0.5 cm per month till the age of 12 months 1 to 2 year 0.2 cm a month and then between 3 to 5 year it is 1 cm per year anthropometric assessment which does not show much change between 1 to 4 years so options are medium circumference skin fold thickness chest circumference or chest circumference to head circumference ratio or height most of the time student get confused between option a and c but the correct answer is medium circumference and here is here is the explanation 
that between 1 to 5 year it remains static between 15 to centimeter among the healthy children because the fat of the early infancy is getting replaced by the muscle so msc will be static between age of 1 to 5 year in a healthy child head and chest circumference equal each other around the age of 3 to 6 months 6 to 9 months 9 to 12 months or 12 to 15 months correct answer is option c and we have to remember this slide for it this slide hc is more than the chest circumference by 3 cm at the time of birth but at the time of 1 year between somewhere between 12 to 9 months the hc will become equal to cc and later hc will be lesser than the cc in whole life the next question is all are unique feature of who growth charts 2006 except breastfed infant is a normative growth model sample collected from six states in the us includes new indicators such as skin fold thickness and it reiterates the children growing similarly across the world here the answer is option b that sample collected from six states in us was incorrect because this study included all the infants who are breastfed across the world from six countries and they have also included the new indicators such as skin fold thickness and they retreat the children growing similarly across the world so option b was incorrect microcephaly is defined as two standard less than mean three standard less than mean 33 centimeter at the birth less than 33 centimeter at birth or it is less than 40 centimeter at the birth these two options are incorrect because we all know that all definition is in the form of sd so either a is correct or b is correct correct option is 3 sd less than mean and we need to remember the less than third and central and minus 3 sd below the mean for the age and gender will be called microcephaly for the head circumference anterior frontal is located between which two bones frontal and occipital frontal and parietal parietal and occipital or it is frontal and zygomatic correct answer is frontal and parietal for this we need to remember this figure anterior frontal nail is the opening between the skull bones and anterior frontal nail is particularly between the frontal and parietal bones suture of the skull fused by 5 year 1 year 3 year or it is 8 years for this correct answer is option c 3 years and for this we need to remember this slide we all know that bones of the skull is held by the sutures the spaces between the bone is called fontanelle the posterior fontanelle is closed by 6 week anterior by 9 to 18 months and cranial bones are closed between the age of 22 to 39 months so here here the closest answer is 36 months so option c was correct Sagittal sutures overlapping causes oxycephaly, scaphiocephaly, plagiocephaly, or it is a kephalocephaly. We all know that if the sutures of the skull bones fuses prematurely, it is called craniosynostosis. So, if the sagittal sutures fuses prematurely what we are going to call it we are going to call it scaphiocephaly and we have a very nice mnemonic to remember s stands for scaphiocephaly so it is also called scaphiocephaly as well as it is called dolicocephaly if you are giving a, getting a any of either of this option both options are correct if sagittal sutures are fuses prematurely we are going to call it scaphio or dolicocephaly Premature, premature, premature fusion of coronal, sphenofrontal and frontoethomoidal suture is seen in tarikephaly, dolicocephaly, plagiocephaly or trigonocephaly. We all know it is not dolico, plagio or trigono, it is tarikephaly and we are going to remember it with mnemonic tarikephaly is tower shape, con shape, funny. Tari is tower, so it is shape of tower. We are going to remember con shape funny as a mnemonic. C stands for coronal, S stands for sphenofrontal, and a funny stands for frontoethmoidal fusion. False about head circumference measured at supraorbital reach, measures hydrocephalus as well as microcephaly. Serial measurement is useful, helps in the measurement of the neurological development, and is an indicator of a brain growth. We all know that it is measured between supraorbital and prominent part of occiput so this is correct it measures hydrocephalus and microcephaly yes that is also correct 
serial measurement is very much useful it help in a measurement of the neuro de- neurological development that is not correct because it does not have anything to do with neurological development and it is a very good indicator of brain growth so this is also correct so the false statement was helps measurement of neurological development